welcome guys. Today we're going to start the build on the AS350 470 size super scale from RC Aerodyne. Um, this helicopter features a tri bladed rotor head, scale carbon fiber rotor blades. It's extremely detailed with body rivets, scale cockpit, navigation lights, it's got the air zamat paint scheme on it, body handles, cable cutters. What's nice about the, this small super scale is it's everything's hidden up inside a doghouse so you cannot see the CCPM mechanics. They're all hidden so all you see is the scale cockpit cabin when you're looking at the helicopter. It uses your standard equipment, a 6S battery, 18 to 2000 kV motor, 9, 9 to 15 gram micro servos and a fly barless gyro system. It's 35.5 inches long by 11.5 inches high by 6 inches wide. So let's get into the build video. So just the basic tools you'll need for this build include a pair of pliers, your hex driver set, a hobby knife, a fill blade screwdriver, some thread lock, and some super glue, or five minute epoxy for gluing the stuff inside the cabin. Okay, so step one actually has us removing the scale mechanics out of the fuselage. And to do this, there's two Allen screws up in here holding the scale mechanics up in the doghouse, as well as back here there's screws that hold on the, the tail frame cover. So we'll start by taking these screws out. So it slides right off. And you'll have to unplug the navigation lights. And we go back to the front of the helicopter. And up inside there, there's one there, one there. There's Allen screws. One, and two. Now those screws out, this is going to allow the mechanics to drop down. And furthermore, it's going to allow the mechanics to drop down and allow us to push them back so we can access the tail unit. Next we're going to want to pop off the the link for the servo push rod. Get our Allen wrench. Three screws that hold this case case cover on. and a Phillips screw here which bites the tail case into the boom. Now I've done one of these builds before guys so I know where all the screws go but it wouldn't hurt to put these little screws in some containers and label them. Alright so now we can pop the cover off. Now we can see the the drive belt pulley. We're going to hold the scale mechanics in front slide this boom forward So this is where it's a little tricky, but you need to 
pop the belt off over the pulley guys on the other side there's two more um, Allen head screws that kind of pinch this tailcase around the boom so you want to loosen those now you grab the front mechanics and this tailcase should slide right off set that out of the way now a little trick here so you can keep the orientation of this belt I like to take some type of round cylinder, in my case it's like a little you know, Dremel wheel, stick it in there, just so the belt can't twist, you just take a piece of tape, and now you know your orientation that the tail belt stays. If it does fall or move or get sucked inside, it's not that hard, you just want to make sure the the orientation is correct. Once everything's done, simply pull this through. There are going to be a bunch of wires in here for the navigation lights, so you got to be careful when you pull this through not to pull any of the wires. All right, guys, with the scale mechanics out, I'll give you a look down the hall here. It's completely empty except for the navigation lighting kit and module is still pre-installed. So here is a look at our scale mechanics. Our cyclic servos will mount back here in the rear. Our front cyclic servo will mount here for our CCPM control. All the control horns are already pre-assembled. All you have to do is mount your servos, pop on your horns, and do your radio setup. It's a belt drive. quick little build tip for everybody um, so you don't lose your parts I do a couple of things one I'll write down on a piece of paper what the screws do and I'll just simply tape them back to the manual or what I'll do is I'll temporarily just thread the screws in a little where they belong so they can't get lost the last thing we want to do is lose a small screw when putting one of these micro helicopters together so just a little tip for you so you don't lose any parts Okay, now we're going to move on to the electronics installation on the scale mechanics. For this build, I chose to use an ICE 50 Castle Creation speed controller using some 12 gram Metal Gear servos, digital, as well as a digital tail servo, 1800 kV brushless motor. For the flight pack, I'm just using a fully max 1250 milliamp 6S battery using a Black Widow fly barless unit from RC Aerodyne as well as my AR615E DS, DSMX uh, receiver and I'll be flying it with my Spectrum DX8 so let's get inside so the, for the first part of like Trunks build we're going to put the motor pinion on the motor uh, get your 1.5 millimeter Allen screw. Slide the pinion on the motor and just snug this up because we're going to have to adjust it to the pinion when we're done. Just snug that up. Um, we'll actually put some Loctite in there be before we do our final setup. So to mount the motor to the frame here and the scale mechanics, you're going to want to take your motor mount screws, stick them up through the bottom of the decking. You take your 2.5 millimeter Allen screw and actually send it through this hole in the bottom of the gear casing. 
and simply line up your motor mounting holes. There's screw number one. To your second screw. And obviously you'll want to slide this to get your meshing correct. Once you get the correct meshing, tighten it up. And the motor's installed. Now you're going to want to add Loctite to the two screws that hold the motor in. Just for video purposes, I'm not Loctiting it in case I need to move stuff around. And then these arms will go right past the motor. If you space your servos out enough to get the proper uh, symmetry, these will have perfect clearance to get past the motor housing. So that is how we install the motor. Build tip number two for you guys. Make sure you have proper backlash in here. Take the one of the motor the gears on the mechanics, and you should be able to rock it back and forth. And get, we call that back backlash. You can hear it. it's it's hard to hear in a video, but you can hear it clicking. I have just a little bit of play between the first gear and the transmission and the pinion in there. You don't want to ultra tight because you'll put stress on the motor and the belt. At the same time, you don't want it too loose to where you would grind the gears inside here. So just make sure you've got some play back and forth, and you'll hear it click. So now we're going to move on to installing the cyclic servos into the mechanics. Depending on the size of the, the servos you choose, if you use 9 gram or 12 gram servos, some of the bodies are a lot deeper. Well, these are the deeper body servos, so if you put them in here, when they overlap, not only would the control horns hit each other, the servos, but you're not going to get the proper symmetry on the push rods past the motor. You'd be rubbing the side of the motor. So in the kit, RC Aerodyne includes these little wooden spacers. So to install the cyclic servos, install the first one on the bottom here. 1.5 millimeter hex driver. Put your little spacer back here. Simply screw it in. Alright, I'm going to do that to all three of the cyclic servos. I'll be right back. Okay, so I went, went ahead and installed the three cyclic servos. I also went ahead and installed a tail servo. So you can see how I put the wooden spacers in between each one of the cyclic servos as well as in the front. And the two reasons I did that. One, correct symmetry on the push rods to clear the motor, but also you can see how close the spacing is in between the servos. Without those spacers, these arms would have hit the servos. You do not need to use a spacer for the tail servo. It includes a nut and bolt to, to install the tail servo. So those are the motor and all four servos installed. I'm going to put the balls on the horns and get the radio set up to center all the servos. So being that this is a tri-rotor blade helicopter, it's going to require a three-axis flybarless gyro. Flybarless gyro of your choice, any of them will work. What I like to use for my scale helicopters is a Black Widow 3-axis gyro. Now this can be purchased at RC Aerodyne for $99.95. You can also download a driver package and the instructions right from the website. Also you can download the programming for the Robur G31. It also works. 
So there's the gyro itself. Comes in this nice protective foam cushion. Includes your cabling to go between your receiver and the gyro. Includes all your mounting pads, spare mounting pads. And then it also includes your USB cable to go between your laptop and the three axis gyro. And this simply just plugs right in. And this will plug into your laptop. And all the programming is done through your laptop. It's very easy to go through the setup. Um, I'm not going to go through the whole setup on it. If you can set up a CCPM 120 helicopter, you'll have no problem setting up this helicopter. It's the same thing as just 140 CCPM. So I'm going to get all this laid out, get my receiver hooked up, and start centering my servos.